See that? That's a monitor. See that? I'm bad at this. See that? <laughs> See that? <laughs> That's a floppy drive with the motor on. They work together like a beautiful, beautiful charm. For example, 6802. Right. Oh, oh. It's off. So, here's the thing. Last we uh, got in here, I want to be able to just dump single registers from the floppy controller at a time, but, hello, wearworm. Um, it only has support for dumping a big old dump of bytes, and when I tried to reduce that dump to just one byte at a time, well, um, it doesn't really work. Right, yeah, see, it's it always says the address is zero and prints a random arbitrary byte, so clearly that's not working correctly. What I am thinking is, firstly, I'm just going to keep tonight short and sweet because I am pooped. I went to bed at four in the morning tonight. Tonight? Last night? Whatever. At some point, I went to bed at four in the morning and woke up at nine, so I am quite tired. So I'm thinking short and sweet. Let's just get this working, figure out how to make it print a byte so we can move on with our lives. And I think what I will do is, oh, let's find, what's it called? Width, width and height, which control the area that, you know, how many, how many bytes are dumped per line in the dump command and uh, how many lines are dumped. And setting them both to one does weird things. So I think what I'm gonna do, I am gonna reduce width. It needs to be a power of two and I think it was printing eight before. And I'm going to reduce that because my screen width is not wide enough and it causes some ravage. So I am going to switch this to, man, if it was eight, that kind of stinks because max lower power of two is four. And that is not a lot, but whatever. And then at least that means we can print more lines. So let's print, I don't know. What's a good number? I don't know, 20, doesn't really matter. So that'll print us 80 bytes. It's a weird arbitrary amount, but what what isn't weird and arbitrary? So let me start just by building that, making sure it works right again after I do that. And then what I'm thinking here is I'm just gonna let that be the dump command, not even worry about trying to reduce it to one. Cause when I, when I wanna dump an individual byte, I just wanna dump that individual byte. You know, I don't, I don't really need to see what the character value is. Um, I don't really care what the memory address is and uh, the dump command prints all of that stuff. So I think I might just try and jam, jam my own command right in here just to print the, the current byte. In the, in the simplest way. Um, so let's let's do that. Uh, right, so build this, done it, it's built. Let's get that ROM on over here. Turn this off, pop it out. Talk about that multitasking, reading comments, and doing the programming at the same time. So Santiago says, gotta monitor that system somehow, right? Damn straight, Santiago, you gotta. And he also said, I assume the mapper thing on the NES will be a little bit annoying for the monitor. Haven't checked it really, but that's my first impression. I mean, it won't really affect the monitor too much. Um, I mean, the monitor doesn't, you know, a monitor doesn't really care what, what hardware you have running on your machine. That's up to you, because all a monitor really does is lets you read and write memory, and that's all you need. Okay, let's load this bin. And some of them assemble. This one does not assemble. We went with super duper simple. So anything that we want to, uh, like any test programs we want to write, we will have to enter by hand in hex, but that's whatever, that's fine. Um, I don't care. It's better than having to reflash the, the ROM every single time. Um, that's it, I'm done, right? We sure will find out in just a second. Hmm. 
I think that is a seating issue. Yes, there we go. Uh, right, so if we set the address to, let's just set it to zero, which I think is what it initializes to, but whatever. Let's just make sure. And then x to dump. Yeah, there we go. And being four wide, that works out a little bit better because it doesn't, you know, wrap, wrap, uh, because the line is too long for the screen. So it's a little, a little more useful looking, even though our font is god awful. So that works. Good. Wearworm says it's not even a color monitor. Uh, that's how tired I am. I, it took me a while to figure out that that was a joke. I was wondering who was talking about who was talking about displays? All right. So, first first job done. Unbreak the thing, make the line printing look better. Very good. Now, let's try and just write a single byte dump command. And when I get that working, nope, that was right in the first place. When I get that working, uh, we will see if we can finally do that version command on the floppy drive. Which if I had just, you know, hard coded it, we could have we could have tried several episodes ago. But I'm not salty. Plus this'll this will this is an investment. This'll be, you know. This'll be It'll pay off. There will be returns. Yeah. Um, so I think... Oh, yeah. Right here. Insert additional commands for non-letter characters. Here. So I'm fine with that, I guess. Let's just make a command that is... I don't know. What, what symbol should we use? What symbols do we have available to us? Um, I could use semicolon just to have it print that terrible, terrible, terrible uh, semicolon character. That could be fun. Um, what does what did I map slash do? I have a I have this key here that is forward slash and dash, but who knows what I actually mapped it as? Forward slash. Okay. Let's uh, let's have forward slash be the uh, the single byte dump. Or the single the single byte read forward slash e e q um, what are we calling that dump byte because I don't have to use these incredibly terse uh, what do I call it labels like m four yeah. I don't know what M4 does. Anyway, um, let me look at outhex. It's a subroutine, yes? So can I just use it? Because that would be really easy if uh, for my little command. Yeah, so yeah, outhex, I think, is just going to print whatever is here in A, presumably. Surely it's got to be A. Well, I guess I could see what else references it. Um, so out hex. Hmm. Interesting. I'm wondering... What, what is in num so number is what is a number we, we're accumulating I think that's where it accumulates whatever hex number you were typing in I think oh well or I could just read this output address yep so I don't want to output a 16 bit value what is out HSP? Is that the one I want? Because that seems to be used in actually printing the bytes. Out HSP. Just jump straight to out hex. <laughs> okay. Uh, huh. 
Well, let's just throw a value in there and see what happens. In fact, for starters, let's just let's just let's just do that. Um, make it super simple. Let's see. When I'm done with this, where do I want to return to? Is the question. Where does this where does this loop actually end? Okay, for example, dump. Outputs character turn, outputs the address, blah blah blah. Outputs a text value. Blah blah blah. blah. Check to see if the width is yeah, outputs the characters. Blah blah blah. blah. And branches back to the top if it's not done. And otherwise. M2? Where is M2? I think that's back up here in the main. Yep, that goes back to just after printing the dash prompt and reads the next thing. So this is, so I want to jump back to M2. So if I'm implementing my thing here, uh, which we called something, what did I call it? Dump byte. So for dump byte, what I'm just going to do for super simple starters is dump byte. I'm going to load an arbitrary value into the accumulator just to just for testy purposes. And then JSR out hex. And finally Was it a jump? Were they jumping all the way back? Yep. Yeah. Jump. That's fine. We'll use a full fat jump. If they're using a full fat jump, why not? Okay, so theoretically that should mean that every time I press the forward slash key, it should... This is the part that I am testing. Uh, will it print AA on the screen? Hopefully. If it does, then I can proceed with that. Uh, 310. What am I doing? What is wrong there? What is 211? Wait, so that's at 310. Dump. Hey. What don't you like about Oh, 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 it's because it's too far. Uh, I see. Shoot. Okay, well, I guess we'll just make that closer. Uh, I can just... I don't know. Move it closer. Let's be, let's be really dumb. You know what's a great way that I can put it closer is put it above the entry point. That's a trick, because I don't know if it's okay to just put it in the middle of uh, all the other code, because I don't know how much that code falls through into itself. So I'm not even going to mess with it. Cool. Um, where Room said, oh, I would have guessed why for single byte dump. Why, why? Is that... I'm definitely missing something there, um, but I'm going. I, I'm going with the symbol because the way they have it set up, uh, they start. They start doing checks to see if it's. Uh, sorry, excuse me. If it's a number, like it, it assumes letters are hex or something similar. It starts doing something funky, so. Sticking with symbols we are, because that's what the source recommends, and I'm not going to go against the gods of the source. Program, 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 program.
You do do. Uh huh. Interesting. Oh pfft. wait. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I put it between the in it is the entry point and I put it right after that. Well, that's fine. I mean I, I can fix that up, but sorry. You can't see my screen. Yeah. In it is here. That's that's where the monitor actually gets called into. Uh, and then dump light is right after that and before the monitor part. So it's fine for right now, but it looks like it did what I wanted it to, so that's good. I was worried that it might print a 16-bit value, but seems seems right. So if I do let's see. F F F D I think for the uh, entry for the uh, uh, reset vector set the address and then if I do forward slash no <laughs> it's gonna print AA because I'm not I haven't implemented anything except for that but it does it does what I wish it to so that's good forward slash is kind of a touchy key which is unfortunate but oh well let's just work it out a little bit yeah Okay, I have to um, I have to read all of Wereworm's suggestions here before I dive in and implement the rest of single byte dump. Um, so Wereworm says H for help, R for read sector, W for write sector, uh, X for full dump, Y for single byte dump, Z for zero byte dump. Oh, and then Wereworm says, work because we're on a 6502. No. Z will be zero page dump. But of course. Uh, Daryl Corral says, return zero. Okay. Um, very good. So now, really, all I should do is... Let's see. First, I need to... Dump. Dumpo. Dump. Byte, nope. dump, byte, and let's move this up just a touch further so that it doesn't get called at the very beginning every time. There we go. Much better. And now, instead of load a a, a um, here's the question. So number... I guess is the address there was there were two values that it puts in the zero page um, to keep track of things and what were they they are did I move them all the way up here no I didn't where did I move them to oh they're right here okay address is at zero C so the question is Do I have to? Yes. Okay. So each command, each command manually updates the address. So I'm just going to steal that code. Um. Hello. Ah. Hmm. Anyway. Um. Yes. So increment address. If it wrapped, increment the high order byte of address and then get the heck out of there. That seems easy enough. And we do want to increment the address every time we print a byte. And yeah, so this should be as easy as, sorry, actually this goes right there. So we will take the current address and just do exactly like they're doing elsewhere. Let's see. Uh, load by literal zero. Um, and we'll see if Y needs to be preserved because yeah, there was there was reasons that they wanted me to preserve Y in the output commands. So I don't know what they use. Oh wait, it's because they use Y for for looping. When they print, that's why. So if it's used inside of my own command, I think it should be fine. 
We'll find out. If it does some horrific thing, I mean, it's not like this is a very complicated program. It'll be fairly obvious if something goes wrong there. So anyway, uh, load Y, and then we'll load A, again, the same way they do, is an indirect zero page load from the uh, zero page variable that is holding the current address, um, offset it with Y, which I think is the only way to do a zero page, I guess we could just look up, because maybe I don't need to do the version that's indexed with Y, but I think that's the only one that exists. Let's find out. Um, <laughs> uh, load A. All the versions of load A. Yeah, there's no, there's no non-indexed indirect accesses. So set Y to zero. We will. So that will load the. It will look up what the current address is in the zero page. Then it will go grab the value at that address and put it in A, is how uh, indirect loads like that work. Then we use out hex to print it, and then we increment the address if required. Oh, um, yeah, we can just jump to being finished. Otherwise, we increment the higher order byte, the address, and I think that's it. I think this is the whole thing. I think we're good. Let's find out. <clears throat> turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, off, turn it off. Gerald says, oh, and Daniel Rodriguez says, hello, everyone. Hello, Daniel. Um, Gerald Gorel says, a zero byte dump would be zero or null. Bad joke. Um, neither. That's the, that's the real joke. Uh, we built it. Let's load it. You would do, do. I wish it would remember this offset value. That would be nice. But also I could just write a script to do this whole build and program thing automatically in one step and I haven't, so that's on me. All right, let's see if it works the way that I want it to. Look, it doesn't print AA at the beginning anymore. Um, yeah, so let's set the address to, I guess I'll do exactly what I was trying to do the last time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's either going to be FFFC or FFFD is where the... The value for our reset vector is well we'll find out um let's do f f f d set the address and there we go e zero that's uh the high order um byte of the reset vector so yeah and then if we keep doing this if this key would freaking work it keeps dumping things and then we get into a bunch of garbage because now we're past the end of ROM, so I don't know. I don't know what is here. Presumably it has wrapped back to the beginning of memory. Like those are probably zero page values. Uh, you know how we can make sure? Yeah. Huh. Huh. I wonder why it started at address zero. That's rather interesting. But I don't really care. I'm mostly going to just use the single byte dump. So how's about we use these commands now to do some floppy tinkering, eh? Eh? What do you say about that? So for starters, of course, we can do the uh, so the the floppy like drive status um, register as I did at the top of this video is sixty eight oh two. Nope, that's incorrect. Sixty eight oh two. Set the address and what do I want to do? Oh, let's turn the motor on just for just to prove that, that still works. Yay! And then again, six eight zero oh, two. Set address. Turn that motor off. So let me look at the doc again to reread what we had already read a time or two ago. 
right. Yes. So first, I'm going to want to reset this thing manually. Um, I don't know. I guess let's... Oh, yes, because we have not actually reset this, let's read from the master status register, which is register 4, and bit 7 will say if it's ready, ready for us to send it a command, which should be 0, because we hardware reset the thing but we haven't done the software reset so should still be at zero so let's do that as a as a quick check make sure things are working the way we think they are so six eight oh four set the address and um i guess just dump it huh uh it says it is zero zero does that make sense i think that makes sense Let's try resetting it and see if it switches to a one. And what bit is reset? It is, let's see. Hold, I need to find this thing again. So I'm going to go with, I guess, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's do the the DSR reset. Wait, no. Let's do the DOR reset, because it has precedence over the DSR reset. So we should know that it will work. So in DOR, digital output register, DOR, DOR, DOR. That was, uh, that's the one that has the drive motor on and off dealios in it yes 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 um <laughs> so we want to clear this no do we want to set this to what is it right now what is it set to right now we want to write something here um I think we can can we read from the digital output register let's find out i think i think we can yes it is read write so let me just see what's in there right now uh 6802 set the address and dump a single byte that also says zero zero which should make sense because if we write a one zero to it again let's just make sure it's not just printing zeros all day just to make fun of us uh, yes, right, 10, turn that motor on, and same thing again, 6802, set the address, print the value, cool. No, it is actually giving us data. So now, let me turn that motor back off, 6802, and 00, write it. Um, <laughs> So it looks like zero is the reset state. So I think I just switch it to one. I bet it says in here. And I mean, I, I definitely read it last time, but my brain is all goopy and stuff. <laughs> so DOR reset requires the host manual to clear it. Um, right. Oh, it, so it starts out in reset and we have to, we have to write a one to it just to take it out of reset. That's all we have to do. That seems straightforward. So if we were, because it's currently reset and we have to take it out of reset. If we wanted to reset the whole thing again, I'm pretty sure that's when we would have to write a zero and then you have to wait a little bit and then write a one again. But we're already reset, so we should just have to write a one there, and that should be all. I just have to remember what bit it is again. It is bit two. So it should just be 6802. Set the address. 04. Write it. 
And now, if I dump the master status register or the main status register again, which is six eight oh four. Yep, there we go. Eight zero. Super cool. Uh, we had that before when we were doing things hard coded in the ROM, but now we have done it through the monitor, so that's cool. <laughs> Worm says, I know what felony a DUI is, but what is this DOR? I mean, I just went through it, and that's a that's an old comment, but it's the digital output register, which just contains some signals for controlling the the physical floppy drive, and apparently a reset as well. So let's go ahead and issue that version command and see if we can get the version back. So and then maybe tomorrow really send some real ass commands. You know what I mean? Um, ooh, I might be able to send like a seek command. That might be a fun one for today. Uh, <laughs> commands. I'm looking for commands. Here we go. And I lost it again. Hello, commands. Where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Did I skip right past you? It's such a big chunk of pages. How can I just have suddenly lost it? You saw it. You all saw it. It was there. Come on. Really? Nope, I did totally lose it. Look. Look. Oh, you can't see that. It's just, I can scroll this up and down all day, and the page just will not refresh until I stop. Anyway, here we are. We got to it eventually. And the, so the version command is uh, one zero. Sure is. So the way that this is supposed to work is that I write this to the FIFO. Which I'm not even going to try scrolling again. Let's just see where the where the FIFO is supposed to be. FIFO, FIFO, FIFO. Where are you, FIFO? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Come on, buddy. Registers. Data. FIFO. That is register 5. Cool. So if we write 10 to register 5 and then check the master status register, it should tell us it's ready to send us a byte back. Uh, where Worm says, I print out selected pages of data sheets like registers and pinouts. Am I the only one? No, you are not. Actually, I should probably do that. Um, but yeah, you, usually I do that all the time. I just, you know, I don't, I don't pre, pre-prepare for these sessions, really. I just kind of sit down and do them. So that means, you know, me getting up and printing it out right now on stream is not going to be particularly interesting. And then outside of the stream, I don't really... I'm not doing this project, so it just doesn't happen. But it's a fine idea. Okay, so uh, 6805, theoretically. And I want to write 10. Cool. Now, let's read the master status register, main status register, whatever it is, 6804. Dump it. Okay, it's 5 0. What is that indicating? So the top bit isn't on, which means it's not expecting a transfer. That's interesting. So what what is it saying then? Let's see, master status register, blah blah blah. So that would be bits one, or you know, this one and this one. Yes. And I don't know what. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ugh. It, four and six. So command busy. Oh, and that's set if it's expecting an in opcode? Really? 
But I wrote the version command. What do you want from me? Hmm. Let's let's look at it again really quick. Uh Hey, Taco Man. How goes it? Let's just print 6804 again. 6804. And now it just says zero zero. <laughs> okay, let's try resetting the damn thing again. Oh, you know why? I, is it because I never sent a configure command? That might be it. So like, yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know. Let's do that. Let's try and send a configure. Uh, uh, uh. It's kind of a bummer. I would have expected the version command to like just work. Um, hmm. Actually, for fun, just for fun. So let's. I'm gonna reset it again because clearly it went sideways. Um, so that was six eight zero oh, two, and then we want to write. Oh, four. No, wait, shit. Fuck. <laughs> um, six, eight, oh, two. Let's write zero, zero. That'll put it in reset. And then... Nope, that is not how you write something. I'm just gonna restart this whole thing just for a second here. <laughs> Uh, Taco Man said, how far are you on? Just got on the stream. Um, I probably won't stay on too much longer. I was trying to do a, a really short one because I did not get much sleep last night. But uh, I will give you a recap because you deserve it because you pop on all the time. Um, I implemented a one-byte dump command in the monitor so that we can just dump registers easy one at a time. And uh, anything else? Um the monitor works good now. And now we're just playing around with some, some floppy commands and learning how to reset it and making sure I understand everything so that we can just screw around in the monitor before we actually write, you know, code. So let's bring it out of reset. Firstly, let's check 6802, set the address and read a byte. Cool, that looks right. Now, 6802, oh, um, we want to write 04, oh, cool, and read the master status register, 6804, oh, set address, dump it, cool, 80, so it's waiting for a command. And now, I was going to say, just for, just for craps and giggles, um, let's try... Uh, writing the version command, so 6805, set the address, and write 10, and then I'm going to immediately read from it again. 6805, set the address, read, and it's... 80. So what is that? Is that what we expect? What's it supposed to send back to us? And it's supposed to send back... Nope. It's supposed to send back 90. Interesting. Oh wait, did it? Well, one second. No, that is 80. That is 100% 80. That ain't right. That ain't right. Um, let's see what this has to say about that. Um, I wonder if I also have to clear the, uh, clear the FIFO startup. I should read the documentation in here, but eh, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, yeah. Returns one byte. If the value is 0, 090, 0, the floppy controller is an 82077AA. What if I just keep reading from the FIFO? 6805. 
6805. 6805. Okay, so I mean it's pretty it's pretty obviously cached. Oh. Huh. Oh, that is hmm. 6805. This keyboard is, I'm gonna tell you, terrible for typing on. Uh, okay, so it, se it seems cached. I thought it printed zero once, but maybe I'm just crazy. No, it, it totally did. Huh. Hmm. That's weird and frightening. Well, anyway. Let me just try this again. What does the master status register say? That's the real question. Um, six, eight, oh... Set it, dump it. Master status register says zero, zero. Uh, okay. Um, I clearly don't know what's going on. So that's fine. Um, I just wanted to, like I said, super short one, get the, get the monitor fixed up, get a one byte thing working. And it is. So now I just have to figure out why sending it commands isn't working. So that's going to be a whole thing to get into on a different day when I have more energy and patience. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you all for putting up with a real short one that didn't even make it to 45 minutes. Um, but maybe this gives people who, uh, you know, are just tuning in and don't want to watch a two-hour stream on something that they're not familiar with, uh, won't, won't turn them away too bad. Maybe they, maybe this will act as a nice intro video for those folks. Either way, um, as always, I will see you tomorrow, and until then, see ya, love ya, bye.